if you're one of my wonderful subscribers, you've probably seen quite a bit of my chickens and their setup. In fact, last December I published a pretty long video about my entire setup, including a fairly large hen house, quite a big chicken run, and a big area in which the chickens can see me free range. That's been wonderful, and I and my chickens have enjoyed it for about 15 years. But last December I retired, and we decided to downsize to a small urban property in a wonderful Kiwi seaside town. Of course, one of my first questions was, what about a garden? What about chickens? Moving into town meant a bit of a rethink about how to ensure that a garden and chickens could be included in our suburban lifestyle. And I thought there must be lots of people who would love to have chickens but live in town. So I thought I'd share with you the process I've been going through to design and build my ultimate suburban hen house. In this first video, it's all about that cliche location location, location. The absolute first thing you should check on is whether the local bylaws allow for you to have chickens at all, and if so, how many you're allowed. Most towns do allow chickens, often up to 10 or 12, but usually roosters are not permitted. I have a video about the advantages and disadvantages of having roosters as part of your flock, but if the rules don't allow you to have one, then you no longer have that choice. Please don't be one of those people who give chicken owners a bad name by keeping illegal and annoying roosters. Complying with your local bylaws about chickens is the best way to ensure that everyone else continues to be allowed the freedom to keep chickens too. Then think about the best location for your chicken coop on your property. Look at the lie of the land where the sun and shadows come from. Where is your house, your gardens and your neighbours' houses? Let's think about those aspects. If your property is sloping, then you don't want to put your chickens at the bottom where it will get wet and muddy underfoot. Our new urban property is fairly flat, so that wasn't much of a consideration. But when we got a huge downpour one stormy day, I noticed where the puddles formed. As it turned out, the chicken coop was in a bit of a low spot. It's good to find that out, so you can easily add porous fill to the area before you start building on it. If you already have some natural shade in your garden, that can be a good location for your chicken coop. Chickens can cope with cold much better than they cope with heat. On hot sunny days, they need at least some shade to rest under. The only shade we had was that cast by the fences. I decided to locate the chicken coop in the shadiest corner of the property and I also covered the enclosed chicken run area with shade cloth. It works well to provide shade in summer and although it's not waterproof, it softens the effect of heavy rain and provides some shelter from rain as well as from sun. The other aspect of sun and shade to consider is that the chicken house itself is likely to cast a shadow. Since I wanted to make the most of the sunny space for vegetable gardens, I planned the location of my chicken house so its shadow fell across the chicken run rather than over the garden beds. Be considerate of your neighbours. In my case, none of the neighbours' houses were close to our fence line, and the local bylaw would have let me build the chicken coop right next to a fence if I'd wanted. But even when local bylaws allow it, try not to have the chicken coop right next to your neighbour's house. They might not enjoy the chortles and coos of your hens quite as much as you do. Under permaculture design principles, and for convenience, Chickens should be fairly close to your house and very close to the garden compost bin. You will probably be visiting the chickens and the compost bin at least once or twice a day, so it makes sense to have them co-located. Of course, with a small urban property, everything is close. One of the joys I get from my chickens is watching them, 
and I've enjoyed being able to do that from the breakfast table at our old house. At our new house, I wanted to be able to see the chicken coop from the kitchen as well as from our deck where we often take our meals. But we really didn't want the view from our bedroom to be directly into the chicken coop. So we decided to leave an existing fence in place so we can wake up to the morning sun coming through the window and look out at plants and flowers and hear the quiet chicken mutterings in the distance rather than right in our faces. The decision to locate the chicken coop in this small corner of our property imposed some restrictions on the size and shape of the hen house in order to keep it at least a metre from the boundary fence. In my next video, I'll look at the design principles that affect the size and shape of the hen house. I'll see you soon.